The nautilites have been around for a long time, going all the way back to the early Paleozoic, 500 million years ago. Most agree that their lineage sprung from a monoplacophorian. It was in the, the Cambrian Ordovician period when their shells became chambered. The Devonian time period is when the coiled shape began to dominate over straight cone-like shells. The coiled shape provided better buoyancy and strength as well as maneuverability. They are in the phylum Mollusca, which is one of the largest phylums second to the arthropods. Some examples of the phylum include slugs, snails, clams, mussels, squid, octopus, cuttlefish, and what this video is about, the nautilus. There are six species of nautilus still living. All of these species can only be found in the Indo-Pacific regions of the oceans. They are native to at least 17 different countries. Some of them are Western Samoa, the Solomon Islands, Thailand, the Philippines, Papua New Guinea, China, India, and Palau. They are limited to these regions by three different environmental factors, depth, temperature, and predators. They usually are found in deep waters during the day, as deep as 550 meters, or 1,804 feet deep. They cannot go any deeper than 800 meters, or they risk implosion. They also can't stay below 300 meters for extended periods of time, or they risk fatal flooding of their chambers. They can come up to the surface, usually at night, to feed. They can't handle temperatures above 25 degrees Celsius, and their predators are mainly in shallow water. The predators of the Nautilus need strong jaws in order to crush their hard shell. They consist of sea turtles, fish, and sperm whale. Due to these limitations and the geography of their habitats, it is difficult for them to move to new areas. This has led to each distinct area having a genetically different subspecies or subpopulation. Nautilus differs from other cephalopods in several ways. Most cephalopods have eight tentacles, but some species of Nautilus can have close to 90. They also don't have any suckers on their tentacles. They lack an ink sac as well. The eyes of the Nautilus are also unlike other cephalopods in that they're simple. The eyes don't have a lens. They don't have the best eyesight. Their eyes are analogous to pinhole cameras. Their siphon, which propels them, expels the greatest volume of water with the greatest force of all other cephalopods. They can also direct it in different directions, facilitating movement. The siphon works by sucking in water and expelling it with the contraction of head retractor muscles. The chambered nautilus also lacks chromatophores, which are cells that produce color used for protection from predators in other cephalopods. The most notable difference is the presence of an external shell. This shell provides protection from predators. The vital organs are located within the body chamber of the shell, protected while the tentacles and eyes and siphon are protruding. The only thing that the shell hinders is its movement. The shell is clunky and heavy, making it slow. The shell also helps regulate its buoyancy in the water. To do this, you need to understand the internal shell anatomy. The internal shell is mostly comprised of chambers that are filled with either a liquid or a gas. The liquid is called chimeral fluid. Each chamber is separated by septa that are comprised of calcium carbonate. It takes anywhere from two to three months to create a new chamber. The sutures on the outside of the shell are formed when each septum is cemented to the outer shell. Each chamber is connected to the siphuncle, a tissue that runs the entire inside length. The siphuncle is what transports the chimeral fluid or gas to the chambers. This is possible by the enzymes in the tissues. This also helps it move up and down the water column. The mantle musculature is responsible for bringing new water to flow over the gills. The blood is made up of a protein called hemocyanin, which carries oxygen around. It is different from hemoglobin in that instead of iron, it uses copper. It's also not as efficient as hemoglobin in carrying oxygen. Nautilus are very slow growing. They are estimated to reach sexual maturity around 10 to 17 years of age. They can live anywhere from 10 to 20 or more years. They only produce anywhere from 10 to 15 eggs per year and it takes about one year for them to incubate. The population sizes are not well known. The fisheries in the Western Pacific have noted a decline in the population in the last 20 years. Some have tried to put it on the endangered list, but because not much is known about them, including population size, it's difficult. Many things pose a risk to them. Human activities such as overfishing and fishing practices are a threat. They are usually captured on accident. Coastal development, increasing water temperatures, and intensive nautilus fisheries are also a problem. Fisheries that capture nautiluses to be sold in other countries usually only prosper for 10 years or so. Because they are limited to a region geographically, once a nautilus population is removed from an area, there's minimal to no chance of recolonization. This was seen in the Tannen Strait in the late 1980s when it became locally extinct. So the question then becomes, why are they intentionally capturing them? 
Unlike many other sea animals, it's not tied to a cultural use. It's more for their shells in souvenir shops, jewelry, buttons, crafts, aquariums, research, and sometimes for their meat, which is usually only a local thing. They are also traded to North America, South America, East and Western Europe, East and Southeast Asia, Africa, the Middle East, and Oceania. From 2005 to 2010, there was an excess of 789,000 Nautilus products sent to the U.S. The Philippines were the largest exporter, supplying the U.S. with 87% of the Nautilus products. Over 99% were from the wild. The rest were captive bred. With the slow life cycle of the Nautilus, this market could pose a huge threat to their continued survival. 